Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. We're given an n by n matrix, so this time it's a square matrix for sure, representing some image and we want to rotate that image by 90 degrees clockwise. And we are required to do this in place so we cannot allocate more memory. We can't just make a copy of the matrix and rotate it like that. So the challenge here is definitely doing it in place. You can see that they had a original matrix like this. What they did is they took the one and put it over here, so 90 degrees. Basically what they did is took this entire first row and moved it into the rightmost column, right? And so they did that by moving this over here, moving this two over here, moving the three over here. Here. And so the problem is when you're moving this one over here, you have to save the three temporarily, right? So you have to save the three or once you move this one over here, you can take the three, save it and move it over here. And we know that this entire right column is going to actually be put in the bottom row. So what is actually going on is this nine is actually being moved over here right that's where it ended up in the result and then this seven is being rotated over here so that's where the seven ends up the one ends up over here the three ends up over here the nine ended up over here so these four let's say have been rotated so far so now we don't have to touch them but you can see there's a little bit left in the outer layer so let's just worry about the outer layer so far we don't have to worry about the five but in the result, we know that the five actually doesn't move, you know, you rotate it. But what about this four? Now, it's basically the same thing that we did over here, right? We are rotating this. So basically, we can think of it as being in the top left, right? Let's the original square we were rotating was like this. Now the square we're rotating is like this. It's still technically a square, you know, if you turn your head a little bit. But this is what we're doing. We're rotating this. So this four is, of course, going to be moved over here to this two. And then and before we get rid of the two, we want to save it and move it over here to the six. And so in the original, we have a two over here, but we know that two is going to be rotated, right? Because this is the rotation we're doing. And before we get rid of the six, we want to save it in a temporary variable and move it over here, replacing the eight, but we don't wanna lose the eight yet because it needs to be rotated as well. It's gonna be rotated over here to this four. And since we rotated the two, we know there's gonna be an empty spot over here for the four to be placed in. And that's what you have over here, the four, the two got moved over here, the six got moved over here, and the eight got moved over here. So this is still a rotation. And lastly, we just have a one by one. We know that, you know, it can't really, rotating it will just be the exact same. So let me show you the general algorithm to solve this problem. We're gonna do this in n square time, meaning we only have to look at each cell in the matrix once. Remember the dimensions are n by n. And we don't need any extra memory, so the memory complexity is gonna be constant. We're doing this in place in our given matrix. So I like to set some boundaries. So we know that this is our left boundary and this is our right boundary initially because we're going to rotate the outermost layer first, right? The outermost square. And then we're gonna move inward, right? We're gonna do the inside of the matrix and the top boundary I'm going to place over here because that's the top. Remember the origin over here is zero by zero. This position is three to three. It goes like this and as you go down, it increases and the bottom boundary is going to be down here. So immediately we're going to start the rotation. Now, how is the rotation going to go? Well, let's start at the top left because it's the easiest, right? We know that this is the general rotation that's gonna take place, right? Because we're going clockwise and then we're gonna do that, right? And we know we're gonna keep doing that with every element in the top row. So we did the first element in the top row, then we're gonna rotate the second element in the top row. And how is that gonna look? Well, 
it's going to be pretty similar. So since this was the second position in the top row, we're going to move it to the second position in the last column right so in this column we're going to rotate this one to this position so the second to last position in the bottom row the main thing to notice though is that this is offset by one this is offset by one from the top this is offset by one to the from the right and so the position that it's moved to is also going to be offset by one from the bottom which is where uh, the last rotation took place. And then this is going to be moved over here. And so as you can see, we have one last rotation to make, right, with these four elements. And they actually do form a square if you tilt your head enough. This is a square rotation, a matrix rotation. But notice how since we already rotated this one, we're actually not doing four rotations for the outermost layer. We're doing four minus one rotations. We're doing three rotations, right? So even though the outermost layer was n by n, we actually did n minus one rotations, right? So we did three rotations. And let's say after we complete the outermost layer, right? Let's say we've completely rotated that. You know, we had to rotate this part, this part, and this part. So once we do that, then we know that we actually have an inner matrix that we have to do. So we did the outermost layer, but now we have to do the inside. How am I gonna handle that? Well, it can actually just be treated as a sub problem because we know no matter what, it's going to be a square matrix. So all we really have to do is take our pointers and then shift all of them by one. So our left pointer will be shifted here. Our right pointer will be shifted here. Our top pointer will be shifted here and our bottom pointer will be shifted here. And so now the the last rotation seems pretty obvious right it's, so it's going to be one rotation it's going to include four elements and then we will have our result now one last thing i want to show you and then after that rotation has taken place we know we can update our pointers one more time but at this point what we'll notice is our left pointer is over here and our right pointer is here. We know that left should always be less than right. And since these pointers have crossed each other, we know that we can stop the algorithm, right? We don't really have a matrix left to rotate. One last thing I want to show you about the rotation is we know that the five, the top left is going to be put in this position, right? The 11. So we're going to cross that out. So we're going to really replace this with a five. But then what happens to the original 11 that was placed here? Well, what we can say is, oh, let's move the 11 to a temporary variable. And now let's put the 11 over here. So we're putting an 11 over here now. But what happened to the 16 that was over here? Well, we have to put that in a temporary variable, a 16, and then move that 16 over here. So let's replace this with a 16. But what happened with the 15 that was over here? Well, we moved that to a temporary variable. And now that temporary variable 15 is going to be placed over here. So the 15 is here. And we don't have to move the 5 to a temporary variable because, look, we already put it over here. So we're needing a lot of temporary variables. I can show you a slight improvement to this which isn't required or anything but i think it makes writing the code easier so we know that this five is going to be rotated but let's do this let's do the rotation in reverse order so instead of moving the five over here first i'm going to take the 15 which we know is going to be placed over here and i'm going to put the 15 over here and i'm going to move the five to a temporary variable Okay, so are we going to move the 5 over here now? Nope, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do this in reverse order. So since the 15 has already been moved, let's take this 16 and move it over here. So now let's replace this 15 with a 16. And now we know that we need to make a rotation from 11 to here. So let's put an 11 over here. And last but not least, we know that the original 5 had to be put over here and we stored that five in a temporary variable. So now let's move that five over here. And so we did the exact same rotation, but do you notice how we did it in reverse order, right? We went counterclockwise. And the thing that, that the reason that was helpful is we only needed one temporary variable, which will make the code 
a little bit easier for us. But it's not actually required. The overall complexity is still the same. The memory and the time complexity is still the same. So now let's get into the code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set our left and right boundaries. So left is zero, right is gonna be the length number of columns minus one. But we know that the number of columns is the same as the number of rows, so we actually don't need this. And I'm gonna run our rotation while left is less than right. And I'm going to go from index. So let's say we're in our top row. I'm going to iterate through the entire row except last element. So how many rotations is that going to be? That's going to be from left to right minus one. Or in other words, we can say from in range right minus left. So this is the number that we're going to do. So if left was zero, right was three, we would do three minus zero, which is going to be three iterations, even though we have four uh, values in our first row. So I also want to have some top and bottom pointers, and these are actually going to be the same as left and right. So top is going to be the same as left, and bottom is going to be the same as right, because we do have a square matrix. It's not just a generic rectangle, it's definitely a square. And the first thing I want to do is save the top left value, right? Because the way I showed you the rotation, we only need to save one variable. So it's the top left. I'm going to get that from our matrix. So matrix of top left. And just like in the drawing, what I'm going to do is move the bottom left into the top left. So in the position of the top left, top left, I'm going to move the bottom left into that spot. The next thing I'm gonna do, just like in our drawing, I'm gonna move the bottom right into the bottom left. We are doing this in reverse order, basically. Even though the rotation is clockwise, the direction we're going is counterclockwise. So the bottom right is gonna be moved into the bottom left. We also wanna move the top right into the bottom right, so in the bottom right position. We're gonna replace it with the top right. And the last thing we have to do is move the top left into the top right. But remember, we overwrote the top left position. But good thing for us, we saved it in a temporary variable. In the top right, we're gonna replace it with the top left. There's just one thing we forgot to use. So we forgot to use our I variable. So you remember how this was the first rotation that we make, right? And then we move from our top left position, we move one spot to the right. From our top right position, we move one spot down. From our bottom right position, we move one spot to the left. And from our bottom left position, we move one spot up and then we do a rotation from here right and then we're not done yet from there on we move another position to the right another position down another position to the left and another position up and then we do a rotation from these values so we can actually handle this pretty easily in our code we can use this i variable to handle that for us so we can add the I value to the left index, which will shift us one position to the right. And this is also the top left position. So we're gonna add I to this as well. This is the bottom left position. And we know that we can subtract I from the bottom, which will shift us up by one. And this is that same value. So we're gonna subtract an I from that as well. This is the bottom right, and to shift that to the left, we can subtract i from the right index. And this is actually the, this is also the bottom right, so we're going to subtract i from that as well. This is the top right, and as we uh, continue doing rotations, we're going to add, we're gonna move down in this column, so we're gonna add i to the top index. And this is the same top right, so we're gonna add an i to this index as well. So basically, as i is incremented, it's going to be handling more and more rotations. It's gonna shift these uh, cells that we wanna rotate accordingly. 
And so this will basically perform a layer of rotation. So after we've completed an entire layer, what are we gonna do? We actually need to do one last computation. We need to update our pointers, right? Because now we're gonna do the sub matrix. So our right pointer can be decremented by one. Our left pointer can be incremented by one. And that is the entire code. So it's going to complete every single layer. Once every layer has been completed, our loop will stop and we are not required to return anything like it just says over here. We're doing this in place inside of our matrix. So we don't return anything. This code is good to go. And as you can see, it's pretty efficient about as efficient as you can get for this problem. And I hope this was helpful. I hope it showed you a, a relatively easy way to write this code, but you also understand what's going on. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.